readings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is the widow of Nain. After Jesus healed a centurion servant in Capernaum, it was time for him to move on. Luke tells us, soon afterward, he went to the town called Nain, and his disciples and a great crowd went with him, Luke chapter 7 and verse 11. Nain is a delightful little town on the slope of the hill of Moray in the valley of Jezreel. It was on the hill of Moray that Gideon defeated the Midianites. Nain is about 50 kilometers away from Capernaum. Today there is a well-maintained path between the two towns called the Jesus Trail. Join me on the trail as we walk in the footsteps of Jesus today. It will take us about four days to cover the distance if we don't stop too many times and talk to people along the way. Jesus was in no rush and visited with the people in the towns and the synagogues as he made his way to Nain. The crowd following Jesus was happy because of all the miracles they had seen him do. But the joyful crowd was about to come face to face with the crowd walking slowly and somberly towards them and carrying the deceased body of the only son of a widow. Luke describes the tragic situation. As Jesus drew near to the gate, behold, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a considerable crowd with the town was with her, Luke chapter 7 and verse 12. Jesus knows how to lead us into our highest moments of joy, but also meet us at our lowest moments of despair. When Jesus saw the widow, he had compassion on her, Luke chapter 7 and verse 13. Luke emphasizes that Jesus saw her. Never underestimate Jesus' ability to see and to feel what you are facing. While she might not have ever heard of him or knew anything about him, Jesus knew everything about her. She might not have seen him, but he saw her. Then Jesus said words that no one in her situation could possibly understand. He said to her, do not weep. Now there was every reason for her to weep. She had lost her husband, and now she had lost her only son. Maybe you are in a tragic situation today. Jesus is present to give you hope. One powerful touch from Jesus changed everything for this widow's life. Without an invitation or permission, he did the unthinkable. He did what no rabbi or religious leader would ever do. He came up and touched the coffin, and the bearers came to a halt, Luke chapter 7 and verse 14. With that touch, the movement of the two crowds completely stopped. Everyone's eyes were riveted on Jesus to see what he would do next. Remember in those days, coffins did not have lids. A cloth was draped over the opening where the body lay. Then Jesus said words that had not been heard since the days of Elijah and Elisha. Young man, I say to you, arise. Luke chapter 7 and verse 14. It was a heart-pounding moment. Everyone held their breath to see what would happen next. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother, Luke chapter 7 and verse 15. A gasp of astonishment was heard through the crowds. It soon turned into praises to God. The widow had lost everything, but when she encountered Jesus, she gained everything. Luke tells us, fear seized them all and they glorified God saying, a great prophet has risen amongst us and God has visited his people. Luke chapter 7 and verse 16. What a great statement. 
a great prophet has arisen among us. With this statement, the people in the crowd began to understand what had just happened. They had walked 50 miles to get to Nain, but they had stepped back into history almost a thousand years. They had walked into a valley filled with the legends of Elijah and Elisha. People remembered that in Nazareth, Jesus had said that he would minister in the spirit of Elijah and Elisha. And shortly after this, John the Baptist sent disciples to question if Jesus was the Messiah, the anointed one sent by God. Jesus gave the following reply to John's question. Go and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who does not take offense in me. Luke chapter 7, verses 22 and 23. Jesus said, I am the one and Elisha, and Elisha prophesied about. Elisha had commanded it not to rain in the valley where Nain was located. Then he moved on to Sidon for safety. And while he was there, he raised a widow's son near Sidon. 1 Kings chapter 17, 17 through 21. Elisha raised the Shumanite woman's son very close to Nain. 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 32. So Jesus came to Nain to raise the widow's son in the spirit of Elisha. This was the first of three people Jesus will raise from the dead. Next, he will raise the synagogue official's daughter in Capernaum. Then he will raise Lazarus from the dead just before he is crucified. In this story, Jesus has modeled for the disciples how to raise the dead. Later, he will give the disciples power and authority to do exactly what he has just done. There are at least 10 stories in the Bible about people who have been raised from the dead. And these stories are in the Bible not just as compassion stories. They show that there are times when raising the dead is an important part of building the kingdom of God. As I have traveled around the world, I've heard many stories of people who have been raised from the dead. Perhaps one day you will be thrust into a situation where God wants to use you to raise someone from the dead. When that moment arrives, rebuke the spirit of death and call the spirit of the deceased person back to their body. I have met people who have come back from the dead. Each of them have fascinating stories to tell. And when the time comes, you will have faith to raise the dead. Now, before John's disciples returned to tell him what Jesus said, Jesus asked the people a fascinating question. Jesus asked, what about John the Baptist? Who did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I say, and one who is more than a prophet. Luke chapter 7 and verse 26. Jesus called John more than a prophet. Yet John said that Jesus was so much greater than himself that he was not even worthy to untie his sandals. Since Jesus was greater than John, then Jesus was more than a prophet. Indeed, he was more than a prophet. He was the anointed one, the Messiah sent from God. Luke says, and this report about him spread through the whole of of Judea and all into the surrounding country. Luke chapter 7 and verse 17. Have you come to discover that Jesus was more than a prophet? I open your eyes to see that Jesus was indeed more than a prophet. He can't be just a prophet. The Quran and the Bible say he was conceived by the breath of God. The people of Nain got it right. When they said, God has visited us, if you will allow him, God wants to send Jesus to visit you. Next week, we'll continue studying 
the life Jesus modeled. Before I leave you, let me pray a few moments. Jesus sees your condition. He sees your sorrow. And he has a solution. The blind receive sight. I re release healing to blind people today. I command your eyes to open in the name of Jesus. The lame walk, Jesus said. If you're lame today, I speak to your weak knees and ankles and feet and say, rise up and walk in the name of Jesus. Lepers are cleansed. If you're carrying what doctors call an incurable disease, I release the healing power of Jesus into your life right now. Cancer go in the name of Jesus. The deaf hear, Jesus said. And so I speak to deaf ears today. You can't hear me, but you're reading my lips and you're reading, you're reading the, uh, the subtitles below the message. Believe now that God wants to open your ears. I say, deaf ears be opened now in Jesus' name. And you're grieving the loss of someone. Someone precious and perhaps someone young has died in your family. Jesus said, the dead are raised up. I call the life back into the person that you have just lost. Lay your hands upon that child and say, Spirit, come back in the name of Jesus and name your child. I release upon you anointing and faith to call that person's spirit back to their body right now. Wake up, daughter. Wake up, son, by the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon you in this moment. The poor have the gospel preached to them. What a wonderful thing that the gospel is free came at a grace price that Jesus paid, but you have access to it right now for free. Would you receive Jesus as your Savior? You have just experienced his power. Now receive the source of the power. Jesus came to die for you in your place on the cross and at the same time pay for all diseases. Discover what the widow of Nain discovered. Jesus gave her back what she cherished the most, and Jesus would like to give you back what you cherish the most right now. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God God bless you and fill you with living hope.